for a long time, Cable Europe was really the voice for, for challenger infrastructure builders in, uh, in Europe. And the transition to Giga Europe came quite naturally. Um, the, uh, the, through the technological advances, through uh, innovation made in the cable and the telecoms industry in general. There's been a transition to gigabit speeds, to end-to-end -end connectivity, uh, uh, high capacity um, networks using all kinds of technologies. And with a very strong focus now increasingly on the convergence of, of um, fixed and mobile networks. Cable com companies that consolidated first, like Liberty Global and Altice, uh, started merging with mobile companies and Vodafone became an active investor in cable. So when Vodafone actually joined the membership of the association and, its, and all of its members became more convergent, the association's focus was no longer on, on cable only. Uh, we're technology neutral now. All of our members use a mix of technologies to reach their customers. And um, we thought it was it's a good time now to relaunch our collaboration under a strengthened voice for private investors in very high capacity networks. And this voice is, uh, is Giga Europe. What we need to do in the European Union in particular, but all of our, our, our European countries, is completing the, the internal market and, and certainly also all of the, the harmonization of standards and technologies. A lot has been achieved, but more definitely needs to be done. Uh, we're looking at the implementation of the new code. Um, and as always, we see differences emerging between markets. We see a tendency among some regulators to micromanage this industry. And it should be big picture again. Uh, we, uh, also in competition policy, we should continue our quest for scale in-country and cross-border scale, really essential to accelerate uh, investments and innovation in Europe's uh, high capacity networks. Um, we uh, also need some new reform and new regulation, which is fit for purpose, eh? carefully balancing the need for um, uh, to drive growth and, and investment in, in European values and trust in areas such as uh, um, artificial intelligence, IoT, data, uh, competition rules, they also need to, f they all need to fit for the digital age. And, and we know that the Commission is working hard on this and we're, we're actively cooperating with them. Finally, uh, we know that the recovery funds, which are coming, um, hopefully, uh, if, if, if the political differences can be resolved, um, will be make a very, very significant difference in, in helping, uh, in particular, SMEs to become more digitized. I think we're doing our best with our industries to connect all the SMEs. Um, but there's still a significant digital skills gap in Europe uh, to create more resilience in government services, e-health and education, but certainly also in the digitization of the SME community, of which we know there are still millions of them who are not digitized. And if only we could bring a couple of 10, 20 percent of them uh, across the digital line, we would unlock tens of billions of value and creation of countless of jobs. So together, I think with with a policy community, we can create a real new digital decade.